Welcome back to Coagulation on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous few videos, we've been going over the uh, coagulation pathways, clotting uh, pathways, and so forth. We looked at the kininogen pathway, the intrinsic pathway of coagulation, extrinsic pathway, and the final common pathway. And I mentioned we were going to go over some regulation of the pathway, and this is one way that the pathway can be regulated. In some ways, you could call this an indirect fibrinolysis because uh, it's leading to net uh, degradation of fibrin, uh, but not directly. It's not actually degrading fibrin. What it's doing is it's preventing the formation of fibrin, at least more fibrin, and it's done through a protein called protein C. All right, so let's actually go over how this pathway works. And I actually included this picture up here, but I've got a little uh, diagram pathway down here as well. Now, um, in the blood vessels, we've got endothelial cells, right? These are the on the on the these are the cells that actually face the lumen of the blood vessel. And right here in this picture, I've got my fibrin clot. Now that supposedly is where the injury occurred. But here's the thing. These proteins are going to be circulating in the blood. And over here on the left, this part's not injured. So I don't want clots forming there. Also here on the right side, I don't want clots forming there because that's not where the injury is occurring. So anywhere where you don't have vessel injury, you don't want fib uh, a fibrin clot formation occurring. So you have to have a way to inhibit it. And one of the ways that occurs, and actually this will also occur after the clot has formed to prevent further clotting once you don't need it anymore, and that's the protein thrombomodulin. Now you see here TM. Thrombomodulin is a membrane protein that is expressed by endothelial cells, okay? That is by healthy endothelial cells. And what this protein does, you can kind of guess with this picture right here, it's going to pick up active thrombin. So we're assuming that thrombin is already active, it's in the blood, and what this protein thrombomodulin is going to do is it's going to bind thrombin and just hold on to it. Okay, And that's kind of what I got here. This is actually the master hand from some of those uh, Mario games like Smash Bros and Super Mario 64. It's representing thrombomodulin, and I actually have the ribbon diagram here for, for thrombin. And what we see here is that thrombomodulin is kind of acting like the master hand, and it's just kind of grabbing onto thrombin with a vice grip and holding it there. Okay. Now, normally what thrombin does is it cleaves uh, fibrinogen into fibrin. That's actually what we saw in the video that demonstrated the final common pathway. After prothrombin gets converted to thrombin, thrombin then acts on fibrinogen to convert it into fibrin, which is what produces the clot. But we don't want that. We want thrombin to be inhibited. Well, what thrombomodulin does is it grabs thrombin and it actually changes its activity a little bit. So now, when thrombomodulin has bound thrombin, thrombin now has the opposite function. Instead of forming fibrin clots, it's actually going to inhibit them. And here's how it works. The function of thrombin changes. So protein C is going to bind and come over here, and it's going to be converted into activated protein C. Okay, so in other words, thrombin still acting as a serine protease, but its, its activity has changed while bound to thrombomodulin. It's now going to act on protein C and clip it into its activated form. Now, protein C, it'll pick up a cofactor, and you may have seen this cofactor in the complement system, which was covered in separate videos. That cofactor is protein S. So when protein C in its activated form has bound protein S, it's going to have two main catalytic activities. It's going to act on activated factor 5 uh, from the previous videos, which we'll go back to in a minute, and activated factor 8 and it's going to act as a serine protease, and it's going to hydrolyze, hydrolyze those two uh, clotting factors into factor eight degradation products and factor five degradation products, meaning protein C's serine protease activity is just gonna clip up these two clotting enzymes, and they're not gonna be able to perform their function. Well, let's think about what the functions of factor five and factor eight were. If we go back to uh, mainly the intrinsic pathway, because this, in this picture at least I, I showed both of them, remember that the conversion, or let's say the activation of factor 10 and factor 10's action on prothrombin to convert it to thrombin, 
requires activated factor 8 and activated factor 5 as cofactors respectively. In other words, this reaction right here requires activated factor 8, and this reaction of prothrombin to thrombin, or the prothrombin converting complex, requires activated factor 5. And if you need more review on that, go back and watch the previous videos. But think about it. If you degrade up factor 8 and factor 5, these two reactions are not going to be able to occur. And so ultimately, prothrombin is not going to be able to be converted to thrombin. What is thrombin doing? Remember, it's converting fibrinogen into fibrin. And so ultimately, by degrading away these two clotting factors, you're not going to get any more activated thrombin. It's going to remain as prothrombin. And then you're not going to be producing any more fibrin. And so really what thrombomodulin is doing here by, by means of protein C activation is it's preventing thrombin from forming so that you can't form fibrin. And so this is actually going to occur anywhere you have healthy blood vessel cells, endothelial cells, that have not been injured, and in areas where it's injured after the initial uh, fibrin clot formation has occurred and you don't need any more. Okay, so this is a way to regulate uh, fibrin formation, and it's not directly doing fibrinolysis, it's just shifting the balance uh, toward fibrinolysis uh, because it's not allowing thrombin to form. Okay. Now, in the next video, what we're going to cover is direct fibrinolysis, which is actually going to directly, actually specifically, hydrolyze fibrin into degradation products. And this is going to be what directly uh, degrades fibrin away after you don't need it anymore. Okay, but both of these uh, pathways acting together, acting in tandem, are going to doubly prevent fibrin from getting out of control and also degrading it when you don't need it. All right, so hopefully this video on thrombomodulin and protein C makes sense. In the next video, we're going to cover direct fibrinolysis, which involves the plasmin pathway. Thank you for watching this video, and make sure to like and subscribe.